going on guys we are in 2020 this is the first bolo show episode of the brand new year jack and i in case you didn't notice we took a lot of hiatus we took christmas break we spent time with our families we spent time catching up on reading we took time just rejuvenating getting those juices but we didn't go anywhere we're right back here for the bolo show jack how was your break it was it was good brian you know and it probably was the longest i've been away from the comic scene in all of say 2019 was that very last week um but now i'm ready i'm ready for everything that 2020 is going to bring a lot of exciting stuff on the horizon so great day to kick it off right here on the first airing on the second Right. And as always, this show is brought to you from Slabbed Heroes. Nick Dorman at SlabbedHeroes.com. Make sure you check out that site. If you're looking for that modern guaranteed 9.8, check Nick out at Slabbed Heroes. He also has some raw comics. He also has some store exclusives and he has his own YouTube channel as well. So make sure you check him out. And if you want to support Simple Man's Comics and get something in return, we have those premium bolo boxes going out. We just sent out December's that had those exclusive t-shirts. We're going back to January with those Frankie's and exclusive variants, but patreon.com simple man's comics. We have a bunch of other tiers there as low as a dollar as well. Dollar, $10. Check out patreon.com forward slash simple man's comics. Right, Jack? Yeah, absolutely. And, uh, you know, you talked about Frankie's comics, but we've also this month, Everybody is also going to get a Folklords number one uh, CBSI comic book speculating uh, and investing um, Folklords exclusive variant as well. So this month and every month going forward, these boxes are only going to get bigger, only going to get better. That's right. So we're packing those boxes with more exclusives. And if you're interested in getting one of those, you can sign up again at patreon.com forward slash simple man's comics. But the reason why we're here, that bolo list last week, I went to the LCS day after Christmas, and we know it was a light week. This week was a little bit better, but it's still kind of a light week. And that bolo list, we always have that first appearances. We have that reader buzz, variant buzz, and then we have a long-term play. This comes out usually late Tuesday night, early Wednesday morning. A lot of times we get Patreon members that early access when it's in rough draft form and finalized. But Jack, what do you think of the list this week? Well, I think it's a, it's definitely a smaller list for sure in sheer volume of books, but we have some major titles coming out specifically from Marvel. And I think that's where you're seeing maybe um, a more condensed list. Uh, there was some clear heavy hitters, um, two in particular with Thor and Star Wars that I think drew high anticipation and knew that most, most publishers knew that retailers were going to have a lot of money sunk into those two books. Right, and we're going to get right now into those first appearances. Starting with Harley number 69, right? We're talking about the first yeah. appearance of the Hand Buzzer. Now, you've heard us talk about this bolo list and how we talk about it. Just because they're first appearances doesn't mean you should go out and buy all these up. And this is a key book to talk about that right now. Because we're talking about the Hand, bu- the hand Bezzler. I read this issue. I'm not a big Harley Quinn, but I saw the bolo list and I was like, what's this about? Basically, it's a screwed up version of McDonald's, right? I mean, you got Grimace and Ronald McDonald and then you had the ham bezler in here. I did like that Frank Cho. Like when he has the seasonal variants, I always pick those Frank Cho variants up, which is what's on the right hand side right now. I love those covers. I'm not a big Harley Quinn fan because we've had that discussion on here before where that book's kind of campy lately. Outside of the black label, I do like the Harleen series, but those Frank Cho, the seasonal variants, every time he puts those out, I pick those up just for PC. Yeah, I'm actually really enjoying the Harley Quinn animated series on the DC Universe app. Um, After the first episode, I felt like I was on the fence. Um, The next few episodes have been hysterical. Uh, whether it's, you know, Ron Funches as King Shark or uh, J.B. Smoove as uh, one of, you know, uh, Poison Ivy's plants. The show kind of is out there, R-rated, and uh, it's one of the better uh, kind of depictions of Harley I've seen. But you hit the nail on the head with the Frank Cho variant. I think when Frank Cho does it right, he does it right. It's just not penetrating anything on the secondary market anymore, but we keep seeing Harley fans pick those books up. And, you know, 2019 seemed like it was the year of the first appearance. There was just first appearances every week. It was a go-to play 
for publishers. And it looks like with the first week of 2020, this type of appearance we're going to keep seeing. So um, definitely not something I expect any sort of long-term value for. But it was a fun book. Yeah. I mean, if you just want to read it for a distraction, by all means, go ahead and give it a read. But either way, also there's Frank Cho, those holiday variants that we talk about or the seasonal variants he does. When you're getting in the convention season, if you go to Frank Cho's booth, he usually has boxes, uh, short boxes of those in there. And a lot of times he has them already pre-signed and they're cheap. They're like $5. So if you're a Frank Cho fan, make sure you check those out when you go to common conventions. But the next one on confirmed first appearances is Hawkeye Freefall. And we get what? A new Ronin, right? Yeah, I didn't, I didn't get a chance to read this. Uh, word got out early on this one that there was a, a new Ronin coming in this book. I don't know what sort of value that has. We're just kind of getting into Ronin in the movies. Uh, I don't know whether or not the whole Ronin stuff is done or there's going to be more Ronin. But, you know, that's clearly Clint Barton. So having another Ronin, now I don't know. But either way, this happening in the comics, it's, again, it, it first appearances drive secondary market buzz and discussion so it seems like week in week out there's new first appearances and a new ronin is enough to get some attention although it seems like this book isn't selling extremely well so i don't know if it's gonna move the needle enough people are gonna have to wait and see and but it'll probably draw into a reveal for who the character is i will say also if you're in the maryland area whether it's annapolis or down here in southern maryland my LCS Third Eye Comics is actually having a Matt Rosenberg signing this Saturday, January 4th. He's going to be at both locations. Evidently, he's going to be down here for a little bit, and then he's going to be up in Annapolis as well. So if you're in the area and you're looking to meet the author, Matt Rosenberg, he's written a bunch of other books, especially what, Black Mass books, right? He wrote a lot yeah, of yeah, that's where you got to start. Yep. He wrote Kingpin, I believe, as well. So if you're yeah. a fan of him, he's going to be at Third Eye Comics this Saturday, January 4th. And that... Is going to wrap us up for first appearances this week. So, like we said, kind of a short week, but we do have some good books to talk about. Oh, yeah, yeah. And do us a favor also, click that thumbs up button for us. And if you're new to this channel and you like new comic books, you like pop culture content, make sure you click that subscribe button, hit that bell notification so you'll be notified when future videos drop. And with that being said, we are going to move right in to the Reader Buzz section. And the first one on the reader buzz section we're going to talk about is Lois Lane, number seven. Now, we talked about this during Last Call, which is our final order cutoff show. We've talked about when we we're talking about Superman, when he reveals his identity. This kind of ties into it. Did you read this one, Jack? I have not read this one yet. Have you read it yet? I, I did read this today. I can see where it kind of ties into it, but I think it stands on its own um, mm -hmm. by itself. There's kind of some, you know someone's watching her taking pictures and then they think that she's cheating on her husband with Superman and it's not like that. And then they find out that basically she goes back to the hotel and the person that's normally cleaning her room is no longer there. And the person that is doing it doesn't, doesn't know who that person that normally cleans it is. Turns out the new cleaner is a hired assassin and there's kind of a reveal at the end. Good issue. I enjoyed it. I've only read, I haven't been reading this comic book regularly. I think I read the first issue, two issues, then kind of dropped off of it. Picked number seven up and gave it a read just because of that whole tie-in with Superman. But either way, I actually enjoyed the issue. And this is one of the ones where I kind of like both covers on this. Normally you're like, well, I like this cover better than the other. I see the purpose or the reason to want the regular cover and the variant for this. Right. I think they've done a great job with cover Bs on this series. There's been a few that haven't really moved the needle books like Hawkman or Martian Manhunter and Lois Lane. But I think all three of those titles are titles where cover B's have been just like hands down phenomenal um, throughout. But I agree the cover A's, they've been more kind of like with the storyline, um, more kind of tiddler covers. And I think they've done a good job with those as well. So I can see the whole, you know, wanting both. But uh, it's funny, this this whole reader buzz section has a lot of kind of coming out of, or coming into type storylines with, you know, books, a book before an event or a book after an event. Um, I think that's kind of a theme that we're going to have going that plus the, the obvious number ones. Right. And then the next one 
on the reader buzz was Miles Morales number 14. Now we had a little bit of a typo on the reader buzz. That was just to throw some people off. That was our pseudonym. But either way, Miles Morales number 14. This is one that I've been enjoying this series, but I haven't actually read this book yet. And then here's one of those books that people pick up the variants. This is one that I kind of shy away from because it's one of those Marvel monthly theme variants. It doesn't really look like it ties into the series. It's the Marvel X variant, right? Yeah, but I will say, and I don't expect any, like, from my secondary market people, any, like, serious money for these. But there were two, at least, that I noticed today, Marvel X variants that seem to be selling out at retail. Um, and I think it's just because retailers have the same thought process you have, Brian, where it's like, you know, why would I want to order a lot of these? Or or and the then, time of year. Who knows? Yeah, well, and again, same week release where we've got two major books. If you're an LCS, you know you're loading up on those two books. So because of that, you're thinking about your total. We have a comic budget. So do retailers. Retailers have a comic budget as well, maybe weekly, maybe monthly. But they're looking at it as being you know, the same as us. But this book cover B seemed to sell out, which I found interesting being that it's, you know, the Marvel's X kind of theme variant for an event coming up or a book coming up that I don't think has really any heat on it, if we're being honest. Um, but this is one of the, a prime example of what I was talking about, coming in to a story coming out of. This is obviously has reader buzz coming out of Miles Morales 13. There's still a lot of, you know, comic detectives out there trying to find out who is Miles Morales' sister, what's her significance going to be, whether or not people are in the, the Spider Zero camp or are in the completely new original character camp. Um, I think this one had extra eyeballs on it for those reasons. And I imagine the next few issues will have that type of uh, kind of effect. Right. And then the next one we had on the reader buzz was Seance Room. This comes from Ben Goldsmith, who friend of the channel we've talked to him at baltimore comic-con great guy love his work this is another one from source point press but what can you tell us about this one jack this is an example every now and again of a book getting buzz and really it's not the secondary market say looking at a print run or a cover and saying i have to have it it's really the creator themselves building that buzz um and that's again in to be clear with the secondary market people, that's not, say, a pump and dump or anything of that sort of nature. Independent comic creators, it's their job to promote their books. And some of them and do better than others. And some of them start to build kind of cult followings. And I think that's what we're seeing with Ben Goldsmith. So, you know, he had the success that he had um, with his previous Source Point press release. He dropped RB9 with Mad Cave Studios. Um, he's got a little bit of a following within, again, it's a smaller crowd, but people who, these indie books mean everything to them. So it's always funny when I hear like big two fans, right? One of my goals for 2020 would be for people to, in the comics community is to, again, like I, we started talking about in the beginning of last year, respect other people's fandoms, right? There are people who just love independent comics. And Ben Goldsmith has already kind of been tabbed as that guy. This book has been heavily talked about and shared within the last couple of weeks. I don't think that was the case, say, when previews were out. Um, I all of a sudden we saw some stores like One Stop uh, Comic Shop, I believe, was one of them that put a store exclusive variants out. Um, and it's one of those things where now you have people on the eve of New Comic Book Day talking about a book um, that hadn't been talked about. Uh, and, you know, again, I credit I credit Ben Goldsmith for getting the word out via social media. And anybody who he's got involved in his team or SourcePoint Press team, the SourcePoint Press, they, we've seen this with their books several times. And then the next one we're talking about on the Reader Buzz, Philadelphia number two. I think we just recently got news that was this picked up by Netflix? Or I heard rumor yeah. or something like that. Yeah, yeah. This one got picked up and we talk about it several times, the difficulty going from issue one to issue two and keeping buzz because sometimes buzz, especially reader buzz, right? It's in the reader buzz category. It's organic. It's people who just really want to read a book. Um, and then after that, you to kind of maintain it, there needs to be that level of secondary market interest. Because um, otherwise you have people from a, that are reading a certain book who will say, 
Well, why isn't this book on the list? Why isn't this book? It's a great book. Because that's not what, what Buzz is. Buzz isn't whether or not a book is good or not good. There's a lot of great books that never make the list. Um, it's whether or not people are talking about it. And at, with this book getting option, going from issue one to issue two, there was a lot of attention on issue two. Um, the cover B variant, which I think um, it's the Girl Scouts uh, uh, author and writer, uh, I think it's like Jim, Jim Mahood. He, uh, his cover B was immediately sold out. Um, it'll be interesting to see. And we've talked about it before over the last year. Independent comics, one of the interesting things and one of the least talked about things is that a lot of times there are first appearances beyond issue one. So it'll be interesting to see with Philadelphia if that's the case. Yeah, I really enjoyed the first issue. I have the second issue. I haven't had a chance to read it yet. But by the time this airs, I'm sure I will have because I'll have some free time to do so. But if you did read issue number two, let us know what you think about it. Is it as good as the first issue? Does it drop off some? Or did you pick it up just because you saw that Netflix has picked this up? It's kind of strange seeing Netflix picking it up considering they have V-Wars also. It's like they're doubling down on the whole vampire. But either way, great book. Looking forward to reading this this issue as well. Then the last one for the reader buzz, Batman Beyond number 39. We've been talking about Batman Beyond for past few issues now, especially with the whole Batwoman and the first Bat first appearance of Batwoman in the Batman Beyond universe, right? Right. So yeah, we had, you know, it immediately pivoted from the first appearance of Batwoman Beyond to who is Batwoman Beyond? Yeah. And there was some strong speculation in the community that it's um, Dick Grayson's sister who first appears in issue number twenty five. Issue number twenty five has jumped leaps and bounds on the secondary market. And now we've gotten to the point in the story where first it was who is Batwoman, you know, or not necessarily who is she as identity wise, but who is this character that's appeared? And then could she handle Blight? Could she step in for Terry McGinnis? And then it transitioned into where it is now is who is the woman behind the mask? And it looks like issue 40 that everything's going to be revealed. Yeah. Um, the last so page on 39, like pretty much tells you like, right. That it's coming, yeah. and um, and you know, I think that they've done it. People might complain about the drag out. I like the way they've done it. I think that's the way you sell comics, right? They've they've been relevant for four months, and this has been a book that I'm not knocking. Brian and I both have enjoyed this book and talked about this book. Um, there are several DC comics books like this book where I feel like are consistently pretty good, um, but don't ever get talked about from a secondary market perspective. But, you know, they've been relevant for like four months, and I think they will be again next month when 40 drops. That, that'll that have serious reader buzz. Yeah, you often hear like lately, like Marvel is winning, right? But I think a lot of it is DC's putting out fantastic stories. There's a lot of DC titles right now. Of course, my favorite right now is The Flash. It's been The Flash since Rebirth has launched. I'm liking Superman. Batman Beyond's been good. Deathstroke's been good. Nightwing, to me, come ups and downs. But there are some good stories in DC. So if you're looking from a comic, just a reader perspective or a collector perspective, don't like disregard these DC comics because you're hearing that Marvel's winning or Marvel has better books. This is a good issue. She's battling blight throughout the whole freaking issue pretty much. And then towards the end, it says like issue 40, you're going to find out who, who, the identity of who that woman beyond is. But, and but part of that perception just comes from a stack deck. Like, DC doesn't do um, you know, incentive variance, ratio variance. So because of that, you're not seeing, say, those $200, $400 books pop off every once in a while. So because you're not seeing that, you're, you know, you're not equating those two as equal. And because those incentives don't exist, retailers don't do as many store exclusives for DC as they do for Marvel. Um, and these are just things that, you know, that's marketing essentially. So then each individual company that markets, you're not seeing that. Um, it, it, but on a reader, straight readership level, Brian, you know, you and I both enjoy DC comics. People ask me all the time, what do you prefer? I can't pick. It's like picking between my children. If I, I, were, to it. if I were to pick, it'd probably be, it'd be disappointing because I'd probably be picking indie comics. But I do yeah, enjoy the yeah, picture as well. Too. Yeah, if I had to pick Marvel, DC, or every indie publisher, I'm going to every indie publisher. But you also got to remember this is all cyclical, right? For people talking about the whole uh, flipping or investing, speculation, whatever you want to call it, that cycle. I remember what five years ago or so, 
it was DC that was dominating that more than right. Marvel. Marvel wasn't putting out as great as books. So it's kind of flipped. But at some point, I think it would fall back to DC. I think they're building their storylines now, just like Marvel did, where you might see some stuff that gets retconned or something else that falls back into these issues that people aren't picking up right now, that sooner or later. But that's what makes the hobby fun, right? So you never know. But for great stories, I still like DC and Marvel, but I'm an independent homer. And that brings us to the end of our Reader Buzz section. So let's not stop now. We're going to go right into the Variant Buzz. One of the big books outside of what we well talk about is this 1 in 50, right? This David Nakayama Tarot number 1. Yeah, Nakayama is actually another guy who is a, uh, he's kind of like a, a friend of the channel. We had a couple DM discussions with him. Um, he's, he's aware of what we do. Big fans of his. Um, it's kind of cool to see him do a cover. He's got a lot of talent, right? And he's one of those guys who sits on like that second level of artists as far as like high RP with secondary market sales. His name alone isn't enough to drive sales, but he does consistently good work. And it's only a matter of time. He's one of those guys where he's always one cover away from breaking out. And I think this cover is going to get him some notoriety because it's already, it's a one in 50 variant for a book that we actually talked about in the last call show when we were talking about the reorder numbers. We may not have been talking about tarot, but there was some kind of hidden nuggets of information about tarot within us talking about uh, before Watchmen number 12, the blank yellow variant. Because what we said is that that yellow variant outpaced reorder sales for tarot. A number one for Marvel. I think that this book, while it'll have, say, a healthy print run, for, because it's a Marvel book, it will be nothing compared to typical Marvel books. And because of that, a 1 in 50 variant isn't the easiest book to find. I don't think there were a ton of shops out there today when you're, like I said, you're looking at your budget and you got Star Wars and you've got Thor and you know you've got some reader buzz, like I said, on Bat Batman Beyond and, and Miles Morales and you got to have those books stock and you got to have X number of other releases that are dropping for 50 uh, uh, covers of this just to get this variant. But selling for about 90 bucks, almost double ratio. And again, and this is, we're recording this the day of release. These could dry up further. This price could go up over the next couple of days. Gorgeous cover, kind of got an infinity look to it. And uh, it almost reminds me a little bit of Mark Brooks. Um, has that sort of a, a, a feel to it. But I think Nakiyama did a great job. Yeah, I don't like, you never want to do like a disservice, but you, as a collector, you naturally compare art to other artists, right? And I saw a yeah. little bit of Mark Brooks in it. And I also saw a little bit of that little Addy Grinov, which is one of my favorite Scarlet Witch yep, covers, is that Addy Grinov cover. And I love those. I tend to like yellow covers, right? But I also like those Infinity type covers where it's got her holding the card with her holding, you know, and it keeps just mm -hmm. going. But there's a lot of buzz around this book, and for good reason. The art on is beautiful. I haven't read the issue. I don't. I'm not really big on reading the issue, but if I could find this one, which I might have missed the boat on, if I could find it for a decent price, I'd still pick it up. Gorgeous cover. And I think also a lot of it, too, is Scarlet Witch is in the news right now. She's being talked about a lot. Yeah, you know, WandaVision, right? WandaVision getting moved up to 2020. It's not, It was some original schedule for a 2021 release got announced today on the 1st, but it's moving up to a 2020 release. And we know that she's going to appear in the Doctor Strange se upcoming sequel. Um, so the MCU has big plans for, uh, you know, for Scarlet Witch. So I think that there's gonna, this is going to be an interesting one to look at and compare down the road to that ground cover you mentioned. I think that there's some classics in the making here. Now, we didn't have a Bolo show last week, but how gorgeous was that Del Otto Doctor Strange variant? And it was regular yes. priced. Right. Right. And it's one of those ones. Um, it's funny since you bring it up. That's one of those ones that I love as a long term play because, yeah, it was everywhere. Um, it, it was a regular price book. You saw it everywhere. Um, wasn't a book that I think most people would probably shoot me for saying that there's any sort of like value investment wise in that book. But I think there is because I think it's going to end up in a lot of PCs. And I think down the road, um when every artist has their day and we get kind of 
overrun with, say, certain artists and move on to the next one like we have with J. Scott Campbell or Al- Alex Ross. We're now living in the world in 2020 in January where Alex Ross and J. Scott Campbell are now kind of having renaissances because a new group of collectors are experiencing their work. So, yeah, I think at, at, at this point, I think anything anything's possible. I'll take gorgeous art any day, especially from a heavyweight like Delada. Then the next book we're going to talk about, The Variant Buzz, was one of the big releases this week. And we're talking about Star Wars number one. This is like probably the best time for them to launch a Star Wars book. Yeah. You just had the yeah. new movie. You just had the season finale of Mandalorian, which is probably one of the best shows on TV right now. So if you don't have Disney Plus, get it. Watch Mandalorian. Evidently, a lot of Disney Plus subscribers canceled their subscription because Mandalorian just ended. But either way, great show. And there's a bunch of variants for this book that came out. Right, and, you know, this is kind of like a pick-your-favorite cover. I don't want to sit and steer you in any one direction. I also want to tell you, as far as an investment, to my investment people, steer clear of it. Um, it's not going to be as bad as the last one um, because you didn't see, right, a ton of Star Wars store variants. I don't know if I saw any. Um, I think Thor was the book of the week for that. Um, and this book, though, I still think will be heavily heavily ordered um it's it's tough to compare it to the last number one because it's not right the last number one was the first one every store in the country seemed like had a variant but the incentives for the last one they go still to this day so far below ratio uh so i i just would wouldn't look at this book for that but you know you got a great uh luke skywalker adam hughes cover you've got a jen bartell um princess leia cover you know, pick your favorite cover, pick your favorite cover artist, and this is a great one to grab for those reasons. There's also some cool error stuff going on that I've seen. Um, some of these Star Wars blanks people were opening up and was having a Thor on the inside. Yeah. So, you know, check your your Star Wars blanks at your LCS because I imagine that those are going to go for a premium. But uh, I think the party variant's fun. Um, I was a little butthurt when they originally announced they were rebooting Star Wars. I thought that would be a great series just to leave alone. Let it get to like four or five hundred issues. Um, but I, I understand it's because of the time jump, what they wanted to do with that. And they want to leave themselves the room to do that again in the future so we can maybe get, say, Clone Wars characters featured in the main title or, um, you know, some of the more kind of historic stuff. They, they go all over the place. Um, and I get that to an extent, so I'm not mad about it. Uh, you know, I, at least Marvel has a legacy numbering, but this is one of, like we said, we talked about from the get go. This is one of the two big books. It didn't really have a huge reader buzz. Um, there wasn't like a ton of people really chopping to read it. It was more a lot of sharing of the variants, uh, in this specific. Everyone's kind of differentiating the variant, uh, favorite one. Yeah, I consider myself a big Star Wars fan, but I actually sat this one out. If I were to pick one, I do like the Adam Hughes cover, like you mentioned. I think the Noto, uh, Phil Noto, Obi Wan Yoda, is pretty cool. I actually like the 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 one on the top left with the 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 droid. Uh, what are those like the scout droids? I forget what they were called. But, yeah. Um, I just I didn't pick it up. I might pick one of the regular priced variants up later just to have in the collection. But also getting back to Disney Plus. If you're a fan of like the Star Wars Rebels and the Clone Wars, all that stuff is on Disney Plus. If you guys are interested in watching that, not just for Mandalorian, but they also have the other Star Wars movies. They just they just added what was it? Um, the Last Jedi just came over from Netflix over to Disney Plus as well. Yeah. So if you're interested in watching that, make sure you check that out. And speaking of Mandalorian, I saw an interesting article today. Another Netflix show that came out. Absolutely loved it. If you read the novels, if you played the video games, Witcher. With Henry Cavill, if you haven't watched that, give it a watch. I read, I saw some article today that said The Witcher had outpaced The Mandalorian or had more views. Crazy. Yeah. So who knows? Probably because The Witcher automatically plays when I turn on my Netflix. Yep. They, they automatically play. Yeah. I had to back out because. Oh yeah, because it'll start um, playing on you. Yeah. I hate it sometimes because I'm like, I just want to see what this show is about. I don't want it to like start playing. Yeah. And the last one we're going to talk about in the Variant Buzz section is one of my favorite Marvel titles right now. Love this run. Love Chip Zdarsky on this. But we aren't talking about Chip Zdarsky so much. We're talking about the 
Daredevil regular price variant, the Marvel X variant. What we got to say about this? Yeah, and this is really the same thing as that Miles Morales variant where um, this is a book that kind of sold out most of the retail. It's not really selling for anything on the secondary market um, cover price, really. Um, but I just think it's a book that got shared a lot. It's, again, this is where it's important to understand the list. Um, when we talk about buzz, it just means that there's a lot of people talking about it. Um, and this book was heavily, heavily shared uh, throughout all of our, my social media timelines. People seem to like the, the Daredevil design character. Um, I think that they they like the overall look of the book. And it seems like any of these are kind of Ghost Rider books that had five. Yeah. I was going to say, it kind of reminds me of Ghost Rider, or Com- Cosmic Ghost Rider on the cover. Right, they they tend to do pretty well. Um, they tend to, like, as far as people enjoying the art. Um, so I wasn't surprised. You know, this book is not a heavily printed book anyway. That's why anytime it gets any secondary market heat at all, Daredevil sells out and can become a $10 book quick. So that's something to be on the lookout for. If there's ever some event happening in Daredevil, it doesn't take much for that book to pop. Um, but I just think that these Marvel X variants got underordered, but I don't think the demand will be there enough to make them kind of take that next step from sold out at retail to kind of selling for 10 to 15 on eBay. I don't, I don't think we'll get there. But there was buzz around it, and that's why it's on the variant buzz section. Yeah, yeah, and for good reason. It is a great looking cover. I like it. And I've said it before, if you haven't been reading this Chip Zdarsky Daredevil run, you got to go pick up the trades or do whatever you got to do, but you're really missing out. It's a fantastic story. One of the best reads of 2019 and going into 2020, so I'm super excited for it. With that being said, I guess we're ready to get into your long-term play of the week this week, right? I think so. The long-term play, of course... That's your living under rocks. The one book we haven't talked about, we're talking about Thor number one. Right. And, and I'm going to be honest with you. Uh, this is another pick your variant book, but this is another one where I would hesitate to ever believe um, any of these ratio variants will ever be anything more than ratio because there's so many store exclusive producers who are going to get those ratio variants. Um, whether it's, you know, there's just so many of them that you know you're gonna end up having a lot of those variants on the market. Um, yeah, and this is definitely not all the covers just from Marvel. No. I think they went up to they label them like letters, right? A through whatever. I think it went up to like cover S. Right, and this, but this is a, but this is another book where there's a lot of cool cover art available. So just within the covers, kind of the regular price covers, um, you know, you've got books like you know, that collage variant that are getting a lot of attention. Um, you've got the Archer book. Um, and then within the incentives, it's a hidden gem into the... I um, love that Jack Kirby variant, but I don't want to pay ratio for it. <laughs> right, right. And that's what I'm saying, but there's just so much to love. Um, a lot of talk about that Scalera variant. There's a lot of people that really like that one. Um, so this this series has got a lot of eyes on it, regardless, because it's a new Johnny Cates number one. But as far as my like long term pick, Brian, I really put my focus, to be honest with you, and you know how I tend to look at things at cover A. And I put it there because of a couple different reasons. Number one, um, like I said, I don't think those ratio variants will ever be above ratio. So I don't think your buy in is going to be enough for you to be able to really do anything with it. Um, and then if this book is going to be sold, it's not going to be sold because of some flashy first appearance. Um, it's not going to be sold. It's going to be sold to readers, right? Who want to put these runs together and collectors who want every Thor book or every Donny Cates book from this run. That's just going to be your audience buying this book. So you need more people to want this book than the supply for this book is. And yeah, I know that it, that supplies a lot. I got a comment on Instagram. Somebody said that. Somebody said this thing was printed to death. But I, that's where I to say I'm a patient man. Um, that's why it's a long-term play. If you look at a, at a kind of a case study to compare it to, Venom, right? Venom is a kind of a B-level seller for Marvel, typically the same way Thor is. Um, Thor may be a little stronger than Venom, but you know they're, they're, they're not the top tier. And 
he jumps on Venom. Venom number one has a multi hundred thousand print run. But do you ever walk into an LCS and see Venom number one on the shelf for cover price? It's gone. It's gone. It's ten dollars at any LCS that you're at. Maybe twelve. Maybe fifteen. Now, if you look on eBay, yeah, it sells for seven or eight bucks on eBay, no doubt. Um, eBay's not a place to sell those types of books. Um, but if I was at a convention tomorrow, that's a ten dollar book all day. Either way, it's above cover price, and we're only what um, two years into this run. So in two years, you've made fifty percent return on your investment. I don't think that people in the comics world can understand and grasp how positive that is from an investment standpoint. That if you were to, you know, had a stack of copies of number one, you made a fifty percent return on your investment inside of two years. That you're actually doing very, very well. And if you could show that same level of growth over the next six to eight years, you'd be doing extremely well. And when you're banking on a book that comes off and reads like a classic, like this one does. I feel better about that. Um, I think Donny Cates is the biggest. I don't. I don't. I'm not going on a limb to say this, right? He's the biggest writer in the game right now. He's the number one guy. Um, he's not going to do a book that's not going to have any cartoon. But you cannot go to an LCS and find Silver Surfer Black number one first print on a shelf for cover price. You cannot find Venom number one for cover price. You cannot find these books. They're not available. Um, they're gone. They're back issues now. It may take time for them to raise in value, but I, I, I don't want to say like it's going to be killing joke, right? But it's going to be that type of book where it's like everybody's going to want to have these books in their collection if Donny Cates continues being what Donny Cates is. And because of really that reason alone, I think these books are going to do nothing but rise in value. In the short term, you may see this, this cover A sold at a discount price. Venom number one, I saw eBay lots where people were selling like 100 copies of Venom number one for 100 bucks. They were trying to get rid of them because they ordered so many to try to get exclusives. You may see the same thing with Thor. But in this, that's why this is not, again, the short-term play, the quick flip. This is the long-term play of the week. And in a long-term play, I really think that Donnie Cates, he had a home run in issue number one. Every retailer has said it. The buzz was out weeks before the book. Uh, the book leaked and it didn't hurt the book. And I think it was the, by the clear winner of the day at a retail level. I, I really think that cover A is the one long-term you can actually do pretty well on. I would try to avoid paying cover price, see if you can get it at a discounted rate, because there are a lot of stores who ordered it heavily, who have extras, um, who cover A isn't even what they're thinking about. But if you so if you're looking to buy it, I would look, try to get it below cover price. But I really love this book. I think it's going to be a big one, and I think it's this series is going to build and buzz, issue and issue and issue and issue. That's what I expect from any Donny Cates author. But especially one with this much riding on it, this is big for kids. This is going to be Venom level or bigger. So I noticed if we look at the screen, the, the Thor variant on the bottom left, all right, almost looks like a Silver Surfer number four, like reverse homage. Yep. <laughs> but I agree. I think this is a good long-term play. I think there's some things that need to play out also as well. We got to see where the story goes. This book, I enjoyed it. It wasn't groundbreaking, but it is just the first issue in the storyline. Yeah. I like how they brought Galactus into this. I like how the results of Galactus coming into this and then Thor at the beginning of the issue to Thor at the end of the issue. I liked how he threw freaking Mjolnir all the way from Asgard to Midgard <laughs> to the Avengers and Tony Stark signed the hammer for him and said, enjoy retirement. There was a lot of good things to like about this issue. This issue. I enjoyed it. Everyone knows I'm a huge Jason Aaron Thor fan. So seeing the first Donny Cates issue, I enjoyed it. I will say this. If you are one of those guys that's into speculation, into flipping, do not use Donny Cates on Twitter for a barometer of what books are going to be hot because he's doing his job as a writer. He's telling you, if you like this issue, you're going to love the next issue. He's done it for Venom. I'm sure he's going to do it for Thor. So don't use his Twitter for that barometer. Just enjoy the ride. Enjoy the story. I'm a huge Thor fan. There's no hiding it. But I liked your long-term play this week, Jack. Just because I'm a Thor fan on top of it. Also, make sure you check out our channel sponsor, Frankie'sComics.com. He's got that Unhack Lee store exclusive for Thor number one. 
You got the raw copy for $15, but he also has CGC 9.8s available for $85. With that being said, that wraps up the long-term play as well as wraps up the bolo list for this week. But make sure you guys tune in tomorrow night. We are back with another episode of The Last Call Show where we are talking final order cutoff for comic books that are reaching that final order cutoff Monday, January 6th. That being said, this is Brian and Jack with Superman's Comics, and we'll see you in the next video. Thank you.